Heidi Ho, my peeps. What a beautiful evening. It is, it's blissfully perfect outside tonight. It's about a few minutes before 7 p.m. And I'm sitting out here in my yard on a Wednesday. And I'm gonna give you a little peek at where, how the seedlings and everything are doing. But first I wanna say that after all of those days and days and days of strapping on the, the gardening PPE and getting out here and working my butt off, I finally hit the wall. I mean, hit the wall. Today, which is the last day of burn season and we didn't have the strength to burn anything else anyway, today, which is May 1st, Grant and I had intended to get in the car and take a little drive and we didn't know where. We were thinking about going as far south as Maricopa, which is down um, on the east side of, of the San Joaquin Valley as you're heading toward the uh, Los Angeles National Forest. You have to go up over Tejone Pass and through through the mountains until you get to Glendale and Pasadena and then you drop down into the LA area. Um, we were gonna go about a half that far today and take a look at the wildflower bloom. It's not a super bloom this year, um, but there's a place called the, I believe you pronounce it Carrizo. I think it's called Carrizo Plain and it's, it's down in that area and it's a national monument and it's just a bunch of low hills, not a lot of trees or anything, just kind of open plain as you would expect on a plain. But this time of year, sometimes the wildflower uh, displays are magnificent. Last year, there was a super bloom that could be seen from space. <laughs> this year, not so much. And um, there were a few reasons why, but one of the biggest reasons is that we had enough rain spaced, spaced out um, uh, the proper distance that what happened was all the grasses uh, just flourished and instead of you know getting their regular height of whatever it is they got much higher than that and so you couldn't see they choked out the well a lot of the wildflowers that would have been there like in a super bloom here and then they kind of obscured the wildflowers that were and so when you're looking up on the side of a hill you could see all the um fiddlehead or fiddle neck the, just a swash of orange. I believe the genus name for that is Amsinkia. Anyhow, it is a staple of the hills out here in California um, in the springtime. It is everywhere. And so normally you have that coming first. Then you start to get the blue and the purple flowers coming in. And this year it wasn't quite as magnificent which didn't make a difference. I mean, we would have driven down there anyway, but it just felt a little too far. When we were talking yesterday, we're like, do we really want to drive that far? I don't know. It's about, you know, two and three quarter hours from here, close to three hours from here. And then we thought, well, we'll just drive up in the Sierras. Maybe we'll go to Sequoia National Park, or maybe we'll run up to Three Rivers, or, you know, there's all sorts of, maybe we'll drive over to the gold country and get there in a couple of hours and <laughs> we woke up today and grant bless his heart man he was game he was like okay or should we get dressed are we going to go where do you want to go and his back's hurting and my back's hurting and we're both just tired and finally i said you know what i just don't think i have it in me in part because in my fantasy in my romantic fantasy brain we were going to pack a lunch and drive someplace and walk around. I could finally walk around for the first time in years. And I wanted to walk around, gosh darn it. I wanted to walk everywhere and, um, you know, have some lunch, meet some people. All the stuff we always do when we go out, right? Well, he does. I, I sit there like a lump. And I wanted to do that, but not not in the condition that we were in today. We, today was a rest day. And let me tell you, 
I tried to keep my eyes open during the morning. I washed some dishes. I did a couple loads of laundry. I took care of my dog, blah, blah, blah. Finally, around 12.30 or 1, I'd had enough. I snuggled back into that recliner of mine, and I slept until, I don't know, about 45 minutes ago, maybe? So, obviously, I needed the extra sleep. And I have not been staying up scrolling, either. When I get to bed these days, I'll, I'll play with my phone until around 11. Then I put that down, and I'm done until morning. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was that's where I'm at now. But I couldn't resist getting up, throwing some water on my face, hopping in the golf cart, and driving around the property because I just I'm so used to getting up and getting out here and working that I I missed it today. I wanted to be out. So instead of doing anything ambitious, I came into my little front yard area where it's right outside the house that's all fenced and I watered my seedlings and I made a little cloche to go over one of my seedling plants. I'm going to make more uh, but I, I wanted to play around with the idea of making a, a plant protector out of uh, chicken wire. I happen to use very old rusty chicken wire which is cool but the problem with that is it breaks so um, if it's been out for too many decades, it just falls apart in your hands. And this this uh, chicken wire that I'm working with now, it has just about reached that position. But I can sure get another. I can get a year or two out of it as a garden protector before I put it in the metal scrap pile. So anyhow, let's go take a look at what I did today. Alrighty, we're going to start right here in my forlorn looking little flower bed that surrounds this awful cheap i have no idea what kind of tree it is i didn't plant it doesn't provide much shade and it's going to have to come out but anyhow so if you look down in there you can see some succulents there and some succulents up in there those came from uh, home depot the last time i raided their uh, garden dumpster and that seems to be doing well let's come over here and you'll see this jade plant I've had forever. But these little um, succulents also came from the Home Depot to weed out their little containers. They're doing good. Now let's come over here and take a look at the seed nursery. That I, th I thought that was a, um, a fruitless olive. I'm not sure what it is. It might be a I don't know what it is, but I, I got it from Home Depot in the dumpster, so there it is. These onions, I've had these onions for years. I, I put these onions in pots over at, um, over at my store uh, long before COVID, and they just keep living and thriving. These are my mammoth sunflowers all up in there. I think I've got some zucchinis uh, right in there. I've got more, some kind of sunflower, I think. Oh, I got these bulbs from uh, 99 cent in one of my last uh, uh, forays into 99 cent. This is a pink gladiolus. I've got one, two, three, four. I think I've got just these four. I think that's all I've got, and they're coming up fine. Um, I also put ranunculus in these, but the ranunculus has decided it's not going to not going to work for me this year. Um, come over here and we can take a peek at, I think this is more mammoth sunflower, but let's take a look, see. Yep, more, I've got mammoth sunflower everywhere. And I, I, I didn't overplant because I love sunflowers and I like to cluster them up. So these will all end up in pots or in the ground and uh, some are going over to the store. Some are staying here. Um, and this is a bunch of stuff my sister gave me. Pincushion flowers and other things. In this bed, I was supposed to have little flowers. And I think I see some that are, that are going to 
that are coming up. Like this is from seed, but this is uh, stinging nettle. This is my basil. My basil is coming along. It needs to be planted in it, either a big pot or it's forever home in the ground. Not sure which way I'm gonna jump on that because I don't have any of my uh, permanent in the ground beds uh, ready yet. So, so I'm not sure sure where that's going to go but it, it's going to need to be replanted here pretty soon gosh dang it my glasses won't stay on my head there we go all right so this little bed just has tons and tons of stinging nettle in it but all of those yellow pansies again those are those are ones that came from uh from the dumpster um i just love that little vignette with the little with my little angel and the beautiful iceland poppies gosh Nothing like a dumpster find to make you happy. Okay, so we're going to back up and take a look at my miniature roses. So, I have a big old miniature rose pot right there. And these roses are so beautiful. I think what I'm going to do is dry these in some silica gel. The white ones will probably just turn brown. But these pink ones, they, they dry really nicely. Then you can make lovely little little dust catcher arrangements with them. Um, here we have yet another one. This uh, rose didn't get enough water the past few weeks, so it's looking a little bit stressed. But I moved it over here so it could be easily watered. I'm going to back up a second and let you see my my lady Banksia, she has bloomed and her blooms are overblown and, and falling on the ground, as you can see. So it's time to clip her back. Unfortunately, these Banksia is only, at least this one, only blooms once a year. So when it's over, it's over. So I enjoy it every, every year when it comes back. There's a forlorn looking um, fern i can't remember where i got i might have dug that out of the garbage anyhow and um, that's not looking too swell i dug this rose out of the dumpster i have no idea it looks got a little bud so i'll find out what color it is here pretty quick over here another beautiful mini that is doing well they've been living in these clay pots forever and they seem real happy in the clay pots. I've dra drag them around for they're like seven or eight years old. Then back over here, you can take a look at my beautiful rootstock. <laughs> it used to be roses, like those pink and white ones you see over there. Um, but this was rootstock that I allowed to, you know, grow. And you know what? I don't care that it's rootstock. Who cares? It's beautiful. Big red, open, old-fashioned looking roses. So other people would clip it out or dig it out and start over. Ha <laughs> ha, not me. I love my rootstock. Down here we have um, sunflowers back in there, big sunflowers there. Um, I've got zucchini here, 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 and here, here, here. All right, and you can see the um, the cloche that I made. Um, it's a little bit tough to, to see because it's so see-through. But this is made of old rusty chicken wire. And I will make some little stakes that I can stake it down into the ground with a little bit so that if the, the dog or the squirrels or whoever wants to step on it, it'll give it a little bit more protection. Also love that vista when you look in this direction. In every direction of my garden, there is some just delicate, beautiful little vignette to look at, and it all makes me so happy. All right, here's my artemisia, my wormwood. Um, I clipped this back. You guys saw that. Uh, those of you who saw that video saw just how far. I mean, I cut three quarters three quarters of that bush away. I mean, it had grown all the way across the path. Um, again, another jade plant. I don't, can't remember where I got it. I've had it for years. And it seems super happy there, so I'm not gonna switch it. 
you can see my, I'm going to call it clover, but that's not its actual name. I forgot what you call this stuff. And I think it's real pretty. It's a weed, but I don't care. I love it. I don't, I don't mess with it. And I have another rose over here. She's looking a little sad. She's also, oh, and she's got some kind of a mildew or rust. Oh, I've got to treat that. She's also turned into nothing but rootstock. So I'm going to come over here and turn, get a better view of her. Rootstock. I don't care. Isn't that pretty growing over the, over my little um, rusty Singer sewing machines and against the window. Just so pretty. Or will be pretty once I once I get out here and clean everything up. I'm I've made tons of progress on cleaning everything up, but I just can't do it all in one day or even one week anymore. It takes me some time now to get this stuff handled. But that's okay. Time is something I seem to have have enough of right now. So Oh, this, this washer ringer thing came out of my grandfather's shed. Um, I need to hang it back up. It had been hanging on the walls of my, of my place here. I don't know why I took it down. Put it back up there. In fact, everything. That's all came from my grandfather's. All of those washboards came from him. That Walker's bourbon uh, barometer came from him all of the old sewing machines the crock this weird thing that says comet just all of this this was all stuff that my my garbage man grandfather kept including and not limited to all of these uh, lanterns these lanterns all came out of his shed as did that lantern down there and these little license plates. And we've got the Elko County Centennial in 1969 and that is where he lived for the last half of his life. All right, so you've seen it. And it's uh, all of its shabby, glorious beauty tonight. And I hope all of you have a lovely day or evening wherever you are. And I will see you again later. Bye.